Hello guys and welcome to the first part of how to make a dead rails game in 10 minutes. So I'll try to keep these videos under 10 minutes. If it sometimes exceeds the 10 minutes, I'm sorry. I don't want to waste your all's time. I know you want to make the game as fast as possible. But developing is a very slow process. You have to take time and you have to fix everything to make sure the game runs smoothly before you release. So first of all, if you like what I do, if you like my content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And also maybe recommend the video to a friend if you think it will help them. Okay, so let's get started right into the video. So in my Discord server, which is also linked down below, it's going to be this kit here. It's going to be a folder and it has this in it. And as you can see, in the workspace, it looks like this right now. So the zones folder, you have to drag it into the workspace. The libraries and server client communications folder, you just drag them into the replicate storage. For the zones local script, you want to drag it into the startup player script. The lobby server is going to go into the server script service. And lastly, the create party UI is going to be dragged into the data GUI. And now you can delete this folder. So let me first of all show you a quick play test of what the system is about and how it works. Don't worry about these warrants, it's just from a plugin that I have. Okay, so you can see that all these pads currently display waiting for players and then zero out of four. When I go into a pad, you can see that the create party GUI pops up and it says creating a lobby one out of four. I can now change the max players. And either you click on start or wait. If I wait and the R at the bottom runs out, see I get kicked out. If I hover start the lobby, you can see that it says starting in, and I can then leave the lobby and it automatically closes. So let me show you how this looks for two players. Okay, so I have now started a local server with players, and let me just off around and you can see that when i go in on one player it also updates on the other player and i cannot currently join this lobby because it's still getting created if i now select the lobby you can see that i can join in and leave again or join in again join in again leave again and yeah if i'm in a lobby and the host leaves you see that the owner is getting transferred over to another player and if it's if there is no other player, then the lobby is getting cancelled. When I when I join, and there's only me, and I press leave, the lobby is getting cancelled. Okay, so you can also set the lobby size to like one, and you can see that I cannot join them either. The lobby is of course full. And yeah, that's pretty much all the features that the system offers. Except for one more, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so. Okay, so if you click on any of those pads and click on the properties tab and scroll down, you can see that in the attributes you have the start on lobby max attribute. This is a bool value. And if you change it to true, this pad will automatically start if the max players is reached. So if you select one player, lobby is going to instantly start and teleport you because of course you're the only player. If there is four players and the lobby fills up and you finally get four players, there won't be a 15 second countdown, but the lobby will start instantly. Right now it's only per pad. If you would like me to update this version and change it so you can select this in the UI. Let me just enable the right one to be true. Then go ahead and play. So if you want me to include this option here in the UI, just tell me in the comments and I might as well also update this version. You can see that when I change it to four or anything that's above my current party size, you can see it's not going to do anything. However, if I just put one there, you can see that we instantly would get teleported. 
So this error message here happens because the Roblox Studio runs on the client on your local computer. So it cannot actually teleport you to another place because of course it's on the client. Well, on your local PC. Okay, so let's get into some customization you can do. So first of all, in the lobby server, if you scroll up all the way up, you can see that there's a few properties. These properties each have their own meaning, and I'm going to explain you what they do now. So the private place ID is the place ID that you will get teleported to whenever the countdown runs out and every player in there gets teleported. So you are probably wondering, how do I get this ID? So you want to press on view, asset manager, and then make sure your game is saved. Let me delete this. See, then you want to press right click here and then add a new place. You can see that the place now loads. You can right click again and click on click or copy ID to clipboard. And now you can paste this ID in here. And this is how it works. So you just paste the ID here. And yeah, if you don't want the place to be here, just press right click and then click on. And yeah, this is the private place ID. For the default lobby max, you can see that currently, if I press play, the default lobby max is four players on each pad. If I change it to like six now, you can see that now the default is six. Also, if you go to play, that the default is also six now. Let me change it back to four. The max lobby limit is just the same thing. Maybe let me change in. So in the selection, you can see that it usually just goes to 10, but now I change it so it goes to. Let me just change it back. Default countdown is just self explanatory. But if you start a lobby, you can see that the countdown is 15 seconds. If you change it to anything else, maybe like 30 seconds, 10. You can then see the lobby will start after your set amount of seconds. And yeah, that's probably it for the server. On the client script, which you can find in the starter player scripts, there's also a few options. So you have the default color. I'm just going to change this to white. And the alert color, which is currently on red. So those are the colors that get displayed in the player selection. So I have set this up as the default color is going to be anything above one and less than six, because I thought it's going to be easier to see if the game is going to be enjoyable, because I think the game is not as enjoyable with one player or too many players, because then it's just going to be chaotic or too lonely. So this is a great way of letting the player know, hey, you maybe want to change this. So if you want to change how and why and when this happens, you can change it right here. So right now it's either if the lobby max is one or if it's greater or equal to six. Maybe I want to change it if it's lower or equal than two or greater or equal than 7, or just greater than 6. And then see that now, first of all, this is white. We can set it to white here. You can now see that the 2 is also red, and the 6 is now white, and it starts to be red at the 7. But let me change this back to default one. And yeah, I think this is probably going to be it for this episode. If you want to change the UI, just make sure there is a frame here. And this is the selector frame. You can change anything in here. Just make sure you keep the order and uh, 
the names and for the leaf frame the same thing just make sure you're, you keep the names and everything and then you should be fine if you have any questions you can dm them to me on discord or just write them in the comments again everything is linked in the description and yeah i hope this helped you and see you in the next episode